So I'd like to uh, talk about, it's going to be a very no, short I mean... presentation on how to make sure that your model is right for 3D printing. Okay, so when, hang on, let's back up. 3D printing. So what we're talking about is instead of instead of t taking a word processor and printing pages on a, you know, text on a pap on paper, we're actually talking about making a real object from something that we created in the computer. Yep. Okay. Like, for example, this statue to the left of the stage. So, okay, so let, let's think about uses for this. I mean, what we're talking about is we're talking about I could come up with a prototype for a vehicle or I could come up with a prototype for a part or a piece or some, some widget, I think, is, is the uh, classic terminology, come up with a widget. And rather than, you know, carrying my laptop or carrying my computer to who I need to show it to, I could actually print the thing out and take them a physical object that they could hold in their hand, move, look around. Yep. Okay. Okay, that we're talking about that's like you gotta watch Kiki because she might look she might jump up as I mentioned Star Trek. And this is kind of a, a Star Trek replicator thing, yeah? Oh, well kind of. It's just uh, it's just something that's becoming more and more common, like three D printing services like Shapeways and Sculptio and there's just a lot of options out there. I know a couple of people who have their own 3D printers at home. Oh, oh, they've got their own? Well, yeah. Okay, I need their number. <laughs> but I tell you, if, you've, if you walk the floor here at SIGGRAPH, down here, you'll see 3D printing, 3D printing companies. They're actually here at SIGGRAPH. They've got their machines with them. And, yep. and Lightwave now exports and imports STLs and PLY files. STL is sort of a universal 3D printing file format. There is I have not yet seen a 3D printer that will not accept an STL file. Uh, Lightwave will also export VRML files, and that is what Shapeways requests if you are going to do color printing using their service. And okay. Also, the uh, that's what Staples is going to ask for too. So now, wait Iris. a minute. So now, okay, color printing 3D objects. It happens. So that's how. So so wait a minute. You're saying that if you're here on the booth floor. And you look at this little alien guy over here that we had printed with, from Shapeways, yes? Yep. That we didn't paint that. That's the way it came out of the printer? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, that, that's, that's kind of... So... That, that's really cool. I mean, we got it. That's really cool. Yep. I, uh, I didn't want to paint it, so we just had it printed in color from Shapeways. So I'd like to give some rules about 3D printing do's and don'ts. And to start with, first, I'd like everyone to know that when you're doing a 3D print, garbage will not print. Aw. <laughs> it has to look like something. I, I don't know what this is. The printer is not going to know either. So don't feed a printer garbage. <laughs> it doesn't matter that the, that the virtual geometry here you, will you could poke it. You could poke an eye out with that. You know that. It's just that this has no counterpart in the real world, so you can't print garbage. Don't print garbage. That's my first lesson. Second, 2D geometry won't print. This has no thickness. It does not exist in the real world. It exists only in mathematics. So what you have to do is to make it print, you need to use thicken to give it a, a sense of dimension, and then you can start talking about getting this printed on a printer. So what we're, I mean, real, it has to be it has real. has to have height, width, and depth. Third. 3D geometry should print, so this is fine. However, no holes are allowed. This will not print because it's not a watertight mesh. It has to be manifold, has to be, aka watertight. So if again, if you run to something like this, use thickener or seal off that hole before you send it to the printer. So in this case, uh, in this case, the so this looks okay. Yeah, this looks okay to me oh. too, but this still oh. counts as a whole because there is... There so even is, though there was something over that, the points weren't welded, yep. so the printer isn't going to see it as watertight. So even though it, it looks watertight, it wasn't because the, this, was just, this was just a uh, loose piece. This still counts as a whole. I don't care if it's almost sealed, it still counts as a whole. So also... I think I know that modeler who did that. Get rid of garbage geometry. No floating orphaned points, no one-point polygons, no two-point polygons. Just get rid of them all. Believe it or not, this can actually print on a 3D printer. As long as both meshes are watertight, 
manifold, and it's okay if they intersect. These can print. This is bad because in only two faces should share an edge. And in this case, you have four faces sharing an edge. So either cut that piece off and move it away, or, or, or maybe make it. that thicker. It's got a, if you need that particular shape. Yeah, you just this is just a bad situation, and this would have to. Be so it's fixed. just too thin. It's just too sharp. Well, it's just more like the printer doesn't know what to do because, it, yeah, it's just. Yeah. So just cut. You could cut this piece off and just move it away from the object. This is bad because even though it looks like it's sealed, it's uh, it still has, it still has three faces sharing an edge here, 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 and here. So that guy's got to go. This looks okay from the outside, but if you look inside, it's got a floating piece in geometry that would have to go. So it's not going to want to find anything, any hidden surprises, as it were, right? Speaking of hidden surprises, this looks like a six-sided box, except you select this and find out it's got two sides. Oh. It's got, it's got uh, even though it's got the right number of points, it has two polygons that were drawn over the same set of points. So to get rid of overlapping bits of geometry, what you do is you hit Shift-I to unify, and it eliminates the redundant polygons. Now it's back to normal again. Cool. This is how you'll actually ship it to the printer. It's got to be tripled, sealed, and that should print. They, they do like, they, they, the printers do want to have triples. They want to have triangles, don't they? I, I think it has to be triangles. I don't, uh, I don't think there's a printer that, I'll, I might find out in my mail tonight, like, oh, there's actually a printer that will take <laughs> if it's An long gun. Yeah. yeah, but I, as for safety's sake, I recommend tripling everything before sending it off. Better off. safe than sorry, sure. Now, some uh, addendums to this. Make sure your geometry is small enough to print. If you have a 10 centimeter printing bed and you try to feed it a one meter box, that's just not going to happen. Second, you got to keep real world in mind. Second, to lower the cost of your print, if you're using a service like Shapeways or even your own printer at home where you're paying for the material that you're using, well, these look identical, but the one on the left is hollow, so it's going to be a lot cheaper to print than the one on the right. So to bring down the cost of your print, consider using Thicken, again, on a shell just to make a hollow mesh, or rather a hollow print instead of something that's solid that would now have... Now, it's not going to be as strong, sure, but it's, it's... That's true, but it's... It's, uh, it's going to be cheaper, it less material. Be cheaper, yeah. And also, don't let your walls get too thin, or else they will fall over during the print. Yeah. So that's... So, the but I do know one thing. I do know that 11.6, with its STL and with its PLY formats, that it has a tool that it comes with to help chase down some of these things. Yep, it's uh, called Mesh Repair. And right now, if, it, if everything's, go everything's ghosted out except for this, it thinks it's found some non-manifold edges. Let's see what it found. Actually, I should probably go to edge selection mode. Oh, it found something there. You know what? I think uh, I think Shapeways must have covered me on this because they did accept the printing, so they must have fixed this on on their end. <laughs> so that's good to know. But that's great. That's a little uh, just a little tool, mesh repair, and hey, you don't have to be doing um, 3D printing to use this. I mean, this thing looks like it's uh, it's chasing single points. Mm -hmm. It's chasing two point polygons. It's chasing holes. It's chasing non-manifold edges. That probably means that it's intersecting with another edge. Yeah. So I'm glad it's selected. So this if it's me. ghosted, it passed the test. If it's still there, then you need to either let it fix it or chase it down yourself. Yep. Nice little proofer. It is a handy little utility, and I'm glad it's there. So that uh, I just wanted to say some thoughts on this mesh. Uh, in what it was was it was a coaster. So what I did was first I built it to scale. So it's about four inches across in light. So wave. you you built this to scale in Lightwave. So <laughs> handy that Lightwave actually knows real world scale units. Yep. So it's it's just handy to it's just handy that I could build to scale and not have to think too hard about what what distance a, a unit represented in my in my modeler. Yeah, I hate I hate thinking hard. So another thing that is the Lightwave logo. The Lightwave logo, if I had just printed it as is, these pieces would have fallen away. I would have gotten the Lightwave logo in pieces with a ring around it. So right, so you kind of you need to think about how to support floating edges. 
because floating pieces. In the real world, we have to think about things like gravity. Uh, so gravity, my old nemesis. So what I did was I built this support structure, which is also watertight, and all it does is it intersects with with the geometry, and the intersection of that is what attaches it to this. So you didn't frame. weld that or anything. You just had it doing just the interpenetration, and, sh and and the printer is like, okay, that's fine. It's just going to grow together, and it just did it for you. Yep. So that was that was uh, pretty cool because that way I didn't have to worry about uh, waiting for a balloon. I could just intersect it and send it to the printer. Very cool. So I'd like to say a few more words about this example. And these are examples that, again, ship with the 11.6 content, including the do's and don'ts model. Oh, very nice. So. Oh, so is this the model that's printed right here on the table? Yes, it is. So there's a couple of things, uh, a couple of things about this model. One, it's UV. It was going to be printed in color, and Shapeways only asked for a few things. It had to be, a, if I wanted this kind of detail in the texture, I had to ship the UV textures as one of three file formats. It had to be PNG, GIF, or JPEGs. And of the three file formats, I went with PNG because it's lossless, and it has a greater color range than GIF. So that's why I picked PNGs over the other two. So this is just a UV mapped texture on this object? Yep, the whole thing is UV mapped. Uh, another thing that I did for it, because it's hollow, this mesh is hollow as possible so that it would be as inexpensive as possible to print. And But I'm sure that, can we see, is it like on the inside you have like some support structures coming out to... to yes, I do. So let's uh, select... Let's select this uh, surface that ah, I very cool. So although it's, it's a hollow mesh, if it was truly hollow, th there would be nothing to attach it to this pedestal. So what I did was I built a support structure inside it that adheres to the neck, adheres to the chest, and to the torso. And that intersects with this pedestal. So the whole thing was printed as one piece, yes? Yep, it's printed as, it's printed as one piece. Although in Lightwave, it's separate meshes for the pedestal and for the, for the uh, character. It's just that they're intersecting with each other, which an intersection means it'll glue together in the print. Uh -huh. and you so noted it, the, uh, the air quotes on that. It glues it. So it's a, another nice thing about 3D printing is that if it's color on, on this side too, that's how it is on the underside of that of that pedestal. Is it's in color? So is that just all the way through it? Yep. So it's all UV map textures. They're PNGs. Shapeways uh, ask that the vermal be packaged with the texture maps in a zip file. And the important thing is that there can't be any folders in that zip file. Uh, no folder structure whatsoever. So when you zip up your assets for Shapeways, just don't don't uh, don't get creative. Don't just zip. Yeah. Don't uh, everything zip up a together. folder by mistake because. It has to. You have to zip up the files directly and package them up for Shapeways. They they want simple too, don't they? Yep. And make sure that when you when you make your mesh as hollow as possible, that you do allow breathing room so that the material can escape. Because even if the material is not fused together or something, if you don't give it a way to escape, they still charge you for the material. Oh, okay. So like if it, it's like a powder. This being, you know, and if it's trapped inside there, they go ahead and charge you for the trap powder. Yeah, some of them are powder, some of them are resin. So, but in this case, I just made sure that there were the escape holes were built to the specification of that Shapeways listed on their website, because they will tell you exactly how big to make the, the minimum size you can make an escape hole before the material just won't escape anymore. <laughs> so it's that's all kind of fun. it's all there on their website, and that's uh that's how this little statue was made. And absolutely, if you're here on the show floor. Come check this thing out. It's right over here on the desk. Uh, it's actually very cool. I know that on the website, there's some pictures of it uh, that you can take a look at. 